My name is Dalai. I've been working, nowadays I work as a development coordinator for Blender at Blender in Amsterdam. I started coding for Blender 10 years, 11 years ago, my first patch into Blender. And although it's fascinating to talk about the Blender project for 2020, I think we can all find these in our official communication channels, which a lot of you don't follow. So I recommend going to code.blender.org. This is our <coughs> main communication page from developers to developers. We just recently posted uh, something about the main 10 <coughs> projects for this year. But for this moment here, I think it's more interesting, oh, yeah. I think it's more interesting to take from all these projects, which can see how it's gonna be affecting for the end users, what it's gonna bring to Blender. Leave them aside for a, li for a little bit and talk about a particular project, which for me is a particular pet project. It's an area of technology in Blender which I'm quite passionate about, virtual reality. Virtual reality or augmented reality or XR, which is an umbrella for all of those. And from this project, try to illustrate a little bit how do we get new developers in Blender, how do we get new features into Blender, how is our communication, where does that happen, how it is to be transparent and open and big at the same time. So let's start our journey here. In 2014, we're starting to play with VR in Blender. So <coughs> this is the Gooseberry project. It was there at the same time the one of the open movies we had in Blender was starting. Who here knows what the open movie is? Okay, good answer. Open project made by the Blender Institute, Blender Animation Studio. And I was playing with one of their files and starting to, to render with stereoscopic VR. Basically, you create two panoramas, you put an Oculus, and you can look around. 2014, like six years ago. It was actually really well received. At the time, the mother of the director of Gooseberry, of the Cosmos Laundromat, was there. She was like, fascinated, oh my god. And for me, it was interesting because that was something that did not start as a feature for VR. It started as something for full domes, is a different kind of technology. And I started working on this as a contributor, as a volunteer, and at some point made it to Blender mainstream. 2016, we said, okay, if we can render in VR, but what if we can... Sorry. <laughs> what if you could... Give one to Tom as well, he'd be very thankful. What if you could also author in VR, if you could experience and see how the project is going before you go all the way to the final rendering. So this is we're starting to experiment with storyboard. <laughs> Experimenting with storyboarding into Blender, but then putting uh, one of those headsets and looking around. At that time, what if a plugin using the Oculus SDK, totally non-GPL compatible, totally experimental, non-official, but it got things going, like it actually th the technology is very interesting and so we're starting to get some traction. 2016, the Blender Animation <laughs> Studio, they had the Caminandes, one of their open productions over there, and they said, what if we could partner up with Google? Google at the time was promoting a lot of the cardboard, their cardboard headsets, and they wanted content, and they wanted authoring tools. DCC, they call digital content creation tools. And Blender, as a big umbrella, was never afraid of partnering up with someone as big as Google if it was of common interest. There was nothing that was violating the openness, the freedom, is the other way around. They allowed us, allowed Blender to actually move forward a little bit of its, its VR agenda and produce a really interesting content. At the time, they were using OpenHMD. It's a, it was a Linux-based, reverse engineering-based uh, HMD VR support for Blender and Linux. What I'm saying that, because at the time, I say I, one of the experiments I was showing was using the official Oculus SDK. The other one was using some reverse engineering Linux. But how does it become mainstream? How, do we, how can we take something like this and make it into Blender? The interesting thing is, there are a lot of people interested on that. That project I was showing here, something I was actually developing personally, myself, like in a research facility in Brazil, because people from the Oculus animations, Oculus story, 
It was a mini group inside Oculus. The company was bought by Facebook. They wanted to experiment with storyboarding for our VR experiences. And the alternative was to draw something, animate, compile the game, and then see how it looks like, and then do it over and over again. And if you could have something that the same authoring, tech, authoring tool for the game can also be used to preview the game, it's actually uh, very impressive. But you have people like the MPX project, which are people that were already involved in Blender. Um, have you guys, <coughs> who here knows what is the grease pencil in Blender? Some? Grease pencil is what allows people to do those kind of 2D drawings in a 3D environment. And the whole grease pencil team is actually composed by people that are not in the payroll of the Blender Foundation, like contributors, and they've been involved for a few years already. And they um, went to the next, well, <coughs> went to the next level, sorry, and decided to think, how what if we could also draw in VR? It could be working with Blender, put an Oculus, and work a little bit and take it out. So that was the whole idea. And what they wanted is a seamless integration. They wanted to be able to not have to learn a new UI, not have to learn a new way to interact. So then, for example, they wanted the whole Blender interface inside the VR space. And they made it. They had uh, someone hacking their way around Blender. It was a really nice prototype. We had people like Blender XR, which is a company called Marui. They developed a plugin for Maya for VR, basically a plugin where you could do all sort of operations immersed in VR. So there, it's only UI, it's only UX and they wanted to start supporting Blender, but they had the same problem we had in the other projects. How can we do something that's compatible with GPL, with a Blender license, and at the same time, uh, compatible with the uh, industry standards for you know, the Oculus or the Vive or the Microsoft Lens? Interesting problem. Uh, BlenderFX is a group in Germany. It's also been involved with the Blender development as contributors. So users, artists that use Blender, giving us feedback, sitting together with developers to think about the features. And they were taking some of the open movies and re-rendered them as a panorama and have a small TV that you see immersed in the CDV to play in there. And they were also interested in using Blender in VR for scene inspection. They are doing architecture reconstruction. They want to be able to look around and then look around. And before rendering the final thing, they wanted to use Blender. They're using Blender. And surprising, uh, Ubisoft. More recently, they joined the Blender Development Fund it's a way that if who watched Tone's talk, probably he covered most of the, the history of how the funding happened to Blender, where we are today. But basically, Ubisoft not only joined the Blender funding, giving a Blender money, but also promising to allocate some development time on their own team, Ubisoft France, to actually implement features into Blender. And they're particularly interested in VR because they want tools for set dressing. So we have your set, you want to put different furniture or pebbles or stones. Or if you're a director and you want to see how a shot's going to look like before you render out. Since everything nowadays goes to computer, goes to 3D, might as well also have authoring tools for the director to be immersed. So how do we conciliate all those different tools and what's the role of the foundation in all of that? Because you think about it, there's the foundation can grow until a certain point. But the fundamental role of the Blender Foundation, I would say, is to make sure the collaboration can happen, to provide the infrastructure, to provide the onboarding, and to make sure we can all work together. Luckily for everyone involved in that, last year, in June, was the first release of OpenXR 1.0. Open, OpenXR is a standard by Kronos. Kronos is the same group behind WW, uh, HTML, behind OpenGL, so all those acronyms we got used to. And it started, they tried to unify this whole ecosystem for VR. While before, every time a software wanted to support either Oculus or Five or Microsoft HoloLens, you need to support their, their SDK, you need to be compatible with their SDK, yada yada. It created a whole abstraction layer where Blender does only needs to worry about OpenXR. And the same way OpenGL is integrated in a, a low-level in the operating system, it just com uh, license compatible. I don't know the details. Shouldn't matter. But it allowed Blender Foundation to say, you know what, we officially can actually help bring VR into reality. So last year, 
We had uh, Julian Eisel uh, to participate in the Google Summer of Code. We still use the Google Summer of Code to bring new developers on board. And he basically got as far as, I'll say quite far, a whole scene inspection. This is again one of the open movies we had at the uh, Blender Animation Studio. And he was using OpenXR to the whole thing on, on Windows, I believe, because on Linux they still don't have uh, head tracking. But we say, you know what, we can, as a uh, the Blender project, can support the basics of VR. VR is a very niche project that is a bit overkill to, de to dedicate. Con uh, we have the whole that fund, right? To dedicate like core money to feature creep and try to get a really smooth VR experience, which who here has a, <coughs> a VR headset? Oh my God, there's actually a... <coughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> It's seen a lot of people. We are like a very biased subsample. <laughs> but it's a very interesting topic. And we developers, geekers, thinkers, we like to, to think about that. So we, the idea was to, to at least get the basics running, the, the fundamentals. Julian, Julian actually being a contributor to Blender for years already. So six years. He's been on and off in the Blender contract. He participated in two Google Summer of Codes. First commit was in 2014, and nowadays, after the, the Google Summer of Code was a nice project, uh, Julian also was available. Say, you know what? Come on board. We we had enough funding at the time to have him like working full time, and that's not he's not there only to do VR, also working user interface and basic bug fixing, triaging, everything else, but it's also part of the process here. Okay, this is working well. Let's get him involved and let's commit both parts to continue this relationship. Of course, the, we do, again, we don't do anything only by ourselves and for ourselves. So for instance, the Blender conference this year actually got one of the, like a, a small representative representation of those groups I was, talk, I was talking about. People from Blender FX, Daniel from MPX, people from Ubisoft. We then could sit together and say, okay, what can the foundation do and what can everyone else do? So I agree that the first two milestones is by the foundation, which is the basic open Excel support. It is the basic scene inspection and API for drawing in VR. But what's going to be the experience, the usability into VR? No one knows. It's still, it's going to be a few years until that's consolidated. So Daniel is going to lead a third milestone toward basically drawing and sculpting interaction Marui, which is not represented here, will make sure their plugin can be run into whatever API we come up with. Then you're going to have like Ubisoft keep it on check because at some point you're going to say, hey, the basic is there. Go have fun and give code back. Give code back. But we cannot have people gathering physically at all times. It's not practical. And at the same time, we Blender as a project has years, 20, 25 years. Wait, how many years? 18. 18 years. It's since it's open source. But it's since 1998 is when, uh, when it was online. And the whole infrastructure of Blender, of the communication, was built on top of, you know, mainly least, 2002 here, uh, IRC, which in a way didn't aid it so well when it comes to compete with Twitter to Facebook to people are gonna use the channels they're they're used to use. So so we are trying to modernize a little bit. So this uh rocket based online RC. It's like uh, so we have a generic we call blender.chat is the website. Anyone can go there. It's where developers now talk among themselves, is where we work. We even as an example have like a whole VR room channel only dedicated for that topic. And it's really the place where people are supposed to work. We have a dev talk, which is a discourse based website, where again, we try to separate user feedback and usability from general development. But the idea is that the user, the Psychos module, the Grease Master module, the VR group, should be able to use that among themselves. And everyone can read and can follow and can, in a way, interact. We keep everything open and transparent. We have the. Um, Every Monday, every Monday we have like a uh, development meeting and we keep everything there posted, what happened, what didn't happen, the 
progress reports of every single developer. Jesus Christ, shame on me. It's only one more slide. And we, as mentioned before, we have a nice blog, pol blog where we encourage not only our own, it's not a place for PR. We're not here about PR, not here to talk about marketing, but it's a place where people can share development. We're the degree Spencer team, which is working you know, in Spain, in Argentina, and we kind of quit taps on their work and, and have some collaboration. They can go there and own that space. The Blender infrastructure is a place for everyone that contributes to the Blender project to really uh, take ownership from. And of course, use this for also outreach for the community. We're using YouTube, using Twitter. So overall, we are in a bit of a transition from going over traditional IRC and mailing lists and lonely developers working their own little projects to try to be bigger and try to get more people to collaborate. So basically, you hope we, yeah, we hope that, that give an insight in the project and more people can join us. Yeah. Thank you. I also believe we might have five minutes for questions. So if anyone has any question or comments. Were you here from the beginning in the beginning, sorry? Yeah, more or less. If you go to the code.blender.org, we posted this last Monday. Uh, there's an overview of the 10 big core projects. There's even more than that, but those are the projects that's everyone's responsibility. Every single developer in the core team will be, like, be responsible for this. The criteria, we didn't put there, but it's basically if a developer goes away and they're one leading a project here, someone would fill it in for them. If the VR developer goes away, maybe we won't have developer for uh, VR for another three years. Yeah, that's the reality, right? But th those are the core projects we're going to make sure is delivered. I see a hand here. Just a oh. question about VR. Uh, when you actually use VR and you see the same thing in like, your screen and then in VR, it actually is really different. I mean, the feeling of seeing the models is really different from... So, Exactly. How does uh, how does it help the productivity to have the VR? Uh, is it just for making VR, or uh, does, for example, you using VR will help you make like a movie later? Mm -hmm. I'm just curious about how VR helps the productivity. Because I would assume it's, if I make it something on the screen, people will make look it on the at the screen. But if you make it on VR, then in the screen is going to be different. Probably. So just mm -hmm. my question: How? Yeah. Uh, could anyone hear it? Could it, be, uh, could it get it, the question down there? Yeah. What's the point of VR if you're not only doing VR? If you're doing VR, it's very obvious, of course. But again, Ubisoft, for example, did like to, when they immerse, they can still have a traditional virtual camera there, like a preview in the virtual set. If you're doing architecture modeling, I want at some point, that's more AR. You are here in Blender, and you put your glass, and you see, for modeling this you know, lecture room, you can see the whole lecture room and go back. Uh, if you're doing character modeling, you know, you probably have seen those making offs of Disney where you have these sculpted characters. You can also, you know, you could also use this to inspect them. Uh, I'm totally biased, but for sculpting, you can actually sculpt in a more natural medium, right? You actually see and, and move around and touch. So, the, but the real answer is no one knows. But we're willing to give it a try for the technology. As long as there is this other part from the community like embracing that as well. It's kind of the process. We need creative people to come back. We need the creative people to come back to? Yeah. It's a good maybe it's a good mid term uh, middle a good compromise between digital and analog. You have a question? No. <laughs> okay. For to do, I don't need to. I mean, it's to use oh, to use Blender. Yeah, see. For two D people, ah, oh, there's a whole roadmap now to our, for storyboarding uh, with tools like Blender. For even like two D, because even for two D, 
Well, it's so handy to have a camera where you can actually pan around, that you can reuse the assets for different shots. That's a whole discussion. I think you might have to for one last question. Yeah. Is video editor not part of the standard project? It's, it's not. Is, is it something that's still mm -hmm. on, on the... We do have a developer, Ricard Antalik, who has been hired to work full time with Trijin to help the infrastructure as a whole, but also to try to tackle the video sequence editor. But it's one of those projects that if Ricard, for whatever reason, decided to walk away, we won't be able to prioritize. However, it's in the agenda. This Vulcan, for instance, is in the agenda as well. More storyboarding for 2D is in the agenda. More sculpting tools, texture painting tools. There's a lot of work being done. Just we had to draw the line at some point, and this we can promise. Everything else is circumstantial. And again, anyone is welcome to, to add to Blender, to bring, ideally, to see what's the roadmap of Blender, try to help on top of that. Otherwise, it might get too, too complicated. But everyone's welcome. So we're, it's a bit of an open end, what's going to be there. We only can only tell when it's ready. Well, thanks everyone for the time. We have secrets here. And that's all the time I have. Thank you. Thanks.